I'm Troy Kirby with Linwood Today with a quick look at the 2021 Washington State Legislative Session. The House Consumer Protection and Business Committee held a public hearing on House Bill 1497, which would sharpen the laws around telephone solicitation, including reducing the hours that solicitors can contact the public, limiting it to 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. daily. Um, the briefing was exceptional. Again, rather than call between 5 and 9 p.m., which we many of us consider our family time, uh, they wouldn't be allowed to call then. You know, they would not be able to call before 8 a.m. in the morning when we're either getting our kids ready to school or starting our work day. And it's, you know, it's a form of disrespect to me. And it concerns me mostly because many of these calls, um, the ones you're talking about, Mr. Chair, are, are dangerous to people in many ways in that they many times these calls will come in and they'll pretend they're somebody they're not or they'll lead the, the called party to believe that there's somebody they're not and often this will be associated with extortion of funds or saying that my granddaughter was in a car wreck and i need to send money right away uh, these are absolutely one of the worst crimes that you can think of, especially for someone who's concerned about a potential family member, even if it's not true. This call simply says in the first 30 seconds, you have to identify yourself. You have to give the caller the opportunity to not call you back at any of your associated numbers because we all have more than one number now. If we have a landline, we still have to have a cell phone and vice versa, or more than one cell phone and making sure that they're not able to call you for a period of a year. These robocalls that come in and pretend that they, you know, hello, and they kind of expect you to answer and then you end up getting clicked through to another service. Would this bill um, prevent that sort of activity? And I specifically think of extended warranties on vehicles because I always ask those callers, which vehicle are you talking about? Because I haven't owned a car in 20 years, but you know, they always ask me about um, insurance on my car. So robocalls, um, I guess is the main question that I have here. Uh, sure, Representative Vaughn. Uh, there's nothing in this statute that specifically would govern robocalls, uh, either in the existing law or the proposed bill. Before we uh, hear from the prime sponsor, I just want to say that uh, in my excitement as I, uh, you know, uh, started the public hearing, I did, I, you know, I, I, re I referenced, um, you know, spoofed calls and, and, uh, uh, what robocalls, the kinds of things that probably drive us all the most crazy. But mixed in with that are a number of just le actually legitimate commercial, um, you know, phone solicitations. Um, there is such a thing, you know, and and um, and I think that really is sort of the first step here. And and it looks to me as though that's what this. Uh, um, um, would would cover. So uh, thank you. So uh, um, what I used to do when I used to have paper files was to jot down dates and the basically very brief description of what I said. Um, so with that uh, personal record, uh, even in a calendar that this person called or this company called, and I told them, please don't call me again, take me off the list. Is that uh, enough to for the AGO and for DOL to pursue? Uh, Representative, there's nothing in the existing statute or proposed bill that would uh, you know, weight that evidence or make it definitive one way or the other. Uh, generally speaking, uh, a paper record would uh, help corroborate your uh, contention that you had asked to be removed from the list and would probably advance your claim. Uh, however, there's nothing definitive one way or the other about writing it down. Thank you for watching the Daily Legislative Report by Linwood Today, covering the 2021 legislative session.